Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Claire Holding and I teach art classes through 3andMe. Today we are going to be making oversized trays or bath trays. You can use them um, in your home, in your kitchen, on your dining room table for an oversized beautiful tray or you can actually put them um, over your bath to hold all your goodies while you have a delicious bath time away from everybody as you um, refresh in the summer weather. So this is what a completed tray looks like, okay? And you've each uh, received your art kit by now together with a, um, a tray that is put together, assembled, sanded, everything's ready to go um, and it's in the size that you ordered according to the width of your bathtub but like I was saying it doesn't necessarily have to go on your bath it can go anywhere in your home um, in addition to that you have the stencil that you chose there will be two handles um, with four screws so the screws are inside the packets make sure you don't lose them it's hard to find replacements um, you have a sponge wedge, you have a um, sponge brush, and the two colors that you picked, one will be for the background and the other will be for the stencil work. And in addition, you're going to need uh, a paper plate, one for each color. Uh, you're going to need paper towels. I know I get very messy when I paint, so I need more than one. A ruler if you want to be exact, but you know, you can eyeball it as well. You'll need a screwdriver, a old credit card or gift card and for those of you deciding to do a wood grain finish you will need water those of you who are not doing a wood grain but a more solid finish are not going to need any water for this project apart from to drink so let's get along and uh, get this project going I can't wait to see what you're all gonna do with yours you've all picked amazing stencils so I can't wait to see it Right, let's get going. I am going to show you how to do a wood grain um, on a spare piece of wood while I paint my tray in white. I've already got a couple in um, wood grain finish or in a like a mahogany or something like that. So I don't need any more of that color. So I'm gonna do mine solid white, but it's totally up to you what you're gonna do with yours. Okay, there we go. Right, so the tray that I've assembled for you, I have sanded it um, and I've been very careful with that so that you don't have any rough edges. The, um, the cross pieces are got, meant to go at the bottom of your tray, okay, so that when you put it onto your bathtub it doesn't slip in, right, so this is what it's going to look like and eventually you're going to put your handles on the edges, right, so I wanted to show you the solid color and then I'm also going to show you how to do a wood grain. Okay, so the only difference is the amount of water that you use. So protect your table, <laughs> this can get messy. All right, so I'm going to go straight from my sponge brush into my paint. Um, if you want to have any paint left over, you probably don't want to go straight from the jar. But there we go. The best way to do this, I find, is to use your sponge side on. Uh, that does help to smooth the color on a little bit more evenly. Okay, so let's get this layer of color on. Um, and you're also going to be painting all sides of this project. I would even do the bottom because you do want to protect that from moisture. You don't want your bath bubbles to destroy this beautiful tray that you've made. So I absolutely love my bath trays. I have a couple of them already. And um, I love putting things on them like a book, when I'm reading a book or if I'm watching a movie, like right now on Netflix. Um, or I put candles, maybe some champagne or hot tea on a cold day. I just really really love it and then when I'm not using it I let it dry out on over the bath um, or sometimes I just take it outside but so far so good there, it might be a little bit of warping to your tray over time and that is quite natural 
because uh, it will be exposed to a fair amount of moisture in your bathroom but I'll show you mine I, after all the years of use it still is looking pretty good and it gets quite wet I must say sometimes so as you can see here there's a little bit of warping that's happened but not much actually so it will it is natural for the wood to absorb some of some moisture over time but um, once you're done with it, I would give it a couple of coats of varnish just to extra protect it. All right, so that is the first layer of white. Okay, to save you on time, I am going to show you how to do a wood grain, but I am going to come back to my tray and do all the sides and the bottom as well in white. Okay, but let me just show you quickly what it would look like if you wanted to do a wood grain. For that, you will need a paper plate because you will need water. So I'm just going to move. Oopsie, I stuck my finger straight <laughs> into the paint. Isn't that, isn't that funny? Okay, so, right, I have a block here, another paintbrush just to show you. All right, so here is the wood grain color. It is an acrylic paint, which I really like to use for staining because it doesn't smell as strong as a oil-based paint. Uh, or a, uh, a stain, um, which means it's going to be less messy if you do knock it over, it's going to dry faster, and it'll be easier to stencil. Okay, so I'm going to show you just on this random block how we're going to do a wood grain. You're going to need water for that, so you're going to dip your sponge brush into the water, make sure it's super wet. Okay, so also have a paper towel close by for this. Right, so it's super wet. Now I'm going to dip my brush into my into my brown paint and I'm going to swish it around a little bit on my paper plate just to make sure that it's nice and diluted, a nice brown puddle. Okay. And then also using your brush sideways, not not lengthways like this, because it's just going to give you a less even finish. Sideways you are going to smooth the brown color onto your tray and your tray is obviously longer than this block but i would use long smooth motions for this okay see how pretty that looks already all right and then what i'm going to do is take a paper towel and just rub off the excess now that has a dual purpose one is that it's going to dry it faster and two, what it'll do is it'll really push the color into the grain and you're going to get a beautiful natural looking wood grain. Okay, doesn't that look nice? Now, if you do want to have your color a little bit deeper than this, you can do a second layer on top. And a nice fun effect as well, say um, over time you would like to have it colored, you can always paint over it and then it'll give you a really nice dimensional effect. Okay, so I am going to give you some time to paint your trays and I will see you back here in a moment when all your trays are busy drying so that I can teach you what to do with the next step. In your um, kit, there were also written directions and there's also a um, link to the blog post where there are um, a couple of pictures that you can follow if you prefer to do it that way instead. But I do hope that you stay with me and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back. I hope you had fun painting your tray. It is so satisfying to see it come together, isn't it? So um, my tray is fully dry and uh, you can check your tray as well by touching it. And if no paint comes off on your hand, it is dry enough to um, do the next step. If you did do the wood grain, there is more liquid involved with it because you've used water, so it might still be damp. In that case, either put a hairdryer on it or go grab another glass of wine or have another cup of tea while it dries. You absolutely need to make sure that it is bone dry before you move on to the next step. Stenciling can be tricky and I want to show you the absolutely best way to do this. Um, so that you have the best outcome. Um, you don't want the tray to be wet and then by adding the wet paint on top of that, you'll have a run. Okay, so let's do this. Your stencil, I've, I've given you each a um, one-time use stencil, so um, you're only gonna use it this one time and then you're gonna throw it away. 
So it comes in three sections. You've got a like a cardboard grid layer on the back, and that is um, that is what you're going to peel off first. And you've got a fibrous layer on the top, which is keeping your delicate pattern together. You see all these little inside bits. Okay, these would come apart if you didn't have the fibrous top connective layer. And then the black in between is the actual stencil. All right, so what you're gonna do is take a credit card or um, an old gift card and just rub your stencil all over front and back. And what that's going to do is it's going to move the stencil onto the connective layer, okay? You want to make sure that it's in the right place so that when you peel it, it doesn't come apart. Okay, there we go. Right. So, once you've done that, you're going to flip it up so that the, uh, the grid layer is looking up at you. And using a, um, a nail, like just a one inch nail, or a, um, a weeding tool, you, or even a toothpick, you can start to pull away this layer. Now, it is easier if you have it on a flat surface. If you do it this way, it can be like sellotape, where it all clings back on each other and then it's useless. So it is easier if you have it on a, bat, on a flat surface and you just gently peel it away. Okay, if for some reason any of your black stencil comes off with it, then just close it up, rub it a bit, and then keep going. All right, there we go. Okay, you won't need that again. So that is the stencil, that's the sticky part, and the sticky part is going to go down onto your tray. All right, so. Make sure that you position it exactly where you want it before you smooth it down. All right, so now because I'm using two, I just need to be careful here that I have the right spacing. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, now with your hand, you're going to just gently smooth the stencil down. Okay, especially in the spaces that you're gonna paint. What that's gonna do is just gonna make sure that there is a good seal between the stencil and the wood so that you get less run. Don't use a credit card or a gift card to scratch it down at this point because your freshly painted surface might get damaged when you remove the stencil. Okay, so I've got that one on and then what we're gonna do is using your picking tool or a, a toothpick or a nail or your own nails, <laughs> your own nails are good, you're going to peel away the top fibrous layer of your stencil. Okay, there we go. And go slowly here, there's no rush. You don't want it to destroy your stencil. Uh, there we go. If any of the black stencil comes off with it, just close it up and smooth it down. All right, there you go. And voila, that's the first one done. Okay, so I'm going to do that with this side uh, while you put your stencil on. If you do want to make sure that it is completely even, you can use a ruler, and this is before you actually um, adhere it. Some of you um, might want to, know, want to make sure that your stencil is equally placed, so you just use a ruler. For those of you who are using two stencils, you want to make sure that the gap between this line and this line is the same okay so depending on how long your tray is I changed the gap so that it would match with your tray okay so for mine for example this is one inch so I've got to make sure that these two stencils are one inch apart all right so I'm going to give you some time to put your stencils onto your trays and then we're going to meet up again and do the stenciling itself so have fun and see you in five minutes so was that fun? Welcome back. There's something about stickers, right? No matter how old you are, it's fun to work with stickers and these are just oversized. So for this, for this part, you're going to need your sponge wedge and you're going to need the stencil color. All right, so uh, I've already decanted mine onto a paper plate. I would decant it out of the little containers 
just because you want to use very, very little paint for this. Less is more at this activity. Okay, so rather do two to three super duper thin layers than one that is too thick, otherwise your paint will run. So using the flat end of your sponge wedge, you're going to dip that into the color. All right, you're gonna get rid of most of it, okay? So just to show you here, you see how dry that is? It's super duper dry. You don't wanna to use too much paint, okay? And then you're just going to blot on your paint color. And I would, I would use um, a very thin hand with the, with the first layer. Once that's dry, add another layer onto it. The first, the first layer really is just gonna dam up the, um, the cut edges so that your paint in subsequent layers doesn't run underneath. So I'm going to do a little sample here to show you. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna show you how thin this is. All right, can you see how thin that layer is? You can really see the wood grain through still, right? Okay, so I am going to continue doing that. This is really so fun. And remember, just wipe off the excess paint before you blot it on. I would do a blotting motion for, for the first layer. Thereafter, you can do more of a swiping, a swiping action. But for right now, just blot it on. This really is fun. Stenciling does tend to scare quite a few people. Um, I suppose it can go wrong in certain ways. You spend all this time making your tray and carefully painting it or whatever project you're doing. And then you get to the stenciling and oh my goodness, it went over the edges or it ran. But if you have as little paint as possible, you should be fine. Okay, so there we go. Another thing that you can do if your stencil edge is very close to um, the side, use a bit of masking tape, okay? Just masking tape it off, just so that you don't go over the edges. I tend to get so excited when I'm stenciling and I'm not the most patient of people at the best of times and I wanna rush through it and then when I come to removing, to remove the stencil, I see I've gone over the edges and oh, you know, you can always paint over it or whatever, but um, prevent that and just use masking tape if you think it might be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to do my whole board I'm going to just show you this first part and then I'm going to let you do yours. Okay, there we go. Now, remembering as well, your tray is made up of different sections. So you do have the joins between the boards, right? Now, in those joins, the paint will run if you use too much paint. So just be extra light-handed as you go over the joins. That's usually the place where most of the run occurs. And don't use any water for this step because that will absolutely go pear-shaped. There are many ways to do stenciling. I find this is probably the best way to do it with a wedge like this. Or you can use a sponge. Uh, sorry, you can use a, um, a hair it's like a wild hair flat brush that you can buy at the craft stores. But this is a nice alternative. There we go. And you don't need to be too even with this first layer. As long as you have a thin coverage, you, you're gonna go over it anyway with multiple different layers. Okay. Go. See, every time I recharge, I get rid of the majority of it, just so that it's not too wet. And don't depress your sponge too much. Don't press, you'd rather use it like a stamp and not to squeeze the paint onto your wood. Every time you recharge, make sure that you wipe off the excess or just use the blotted section, right? Instead of going into the wet paint, I'm going onto the blotted areas. Go. I want mine to look a little bit grungier, so I'm not going to do 
a completely solid finish. I want it to look aged and vintage. Go. Especially if you have a smaller stencil, maybe you just use masking tape around it to make sure that you're not going to go over the edges like I often do. Go. Learned that the hard, hard way. You know, when you painting a room, the masking of the room takes longer than the actual painting, but it's so worth it. Okay, there we go. Right. So once you've done the first layer, let it dry, let it dry fully, so that when you do your second and third layers, it's not gonna pull up the first layer of paint. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So it's looking quite grungy, and that's just because it's the first layer. All right, but I am going to go over it again. Um, you can always touch it. Oh, you see already it's dry. Okay, that's how you know that you've used enough paint, that once you've got through the first layer, the beginning is already dry. All right, so you guys do that stencil your tray and let it dry and i will see you as soon as you've done that so just hit pause and we'll meet up again in a few minutes all right have fun i hope you had as much fun as i did doing that i really do love stenciling the big reveal is coming up so make sure your stencil is perfectly dry so nothing should come off just so that you don't inadvertently smudge something um, and then we're good to go I can't wait to see how mine turned out. I've wanted it a little bit grungier, so I don't know. Let's hope for the best. Just, if you do find that some has run a little bit underneath, it's okay, there are ways to fix it. But also remember, this is made with your own precious hands. You didn't buy it in a store, so it just has to be fun, right? Okay, so with a bigger stencil, I often find it easier to start picking from the inside. So you can either use a nail, or a picking or weeding tool or even a toothpick for this. It does make it a little bit easier. So if you go from the inside out, it does sometimes make it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm just going to start removing this. Oh, I'm quite excited. It's starting to look good. This is looking good. There we go. Sometimes the black stencil looks so pretty that you don't actually want to take it off, right? There we go. Okay. Ah, that's looking good. What about you? What's yours looking like? Please do share with me when you're done with yours. I would love to see how yours all turned out. That's what I miss in teaching the classes in person. I miss the personal contact. But I also miss seeing what everybody's artworks turn out like. I'm often so inspired during classes, you know, I start doing my, my art in a certain way and I get in a rut. And then it's always good to see what others come up with, all the different new ways, new color combinations, things I might not have thought of before. Oh, I am liking this. Every now and again, I've done something and it hasn't worked out and I've had to sand it all off and start over. Um, but it's always fun. Go. I hope yours turning, are turning out too. I really do. I miss seeing you all. I miss being there in person and chatting to you and answering your questions. Hearing your beautiful stories. There we go. Okay. Almost done on mine. How are you coping on yours? Right, there we go. This is like stickers again. No matter how old you are. Oh, that is so nice. It's like when you take the masking tape off after you've painted a part of your house. The big reveal. Oh, there we go. I like how it turned out. There you go. What do you think? 
I'm happy with mine. I hope you're happy with yours. Okay, so um, throw those away. You're not going to be able to use them again. Um, and then grab a screwdriver and your handles. Okay. And place them at the same height on both sides. All right, there we go. You, if you want to, you can uh, use a screwdriver, um, you can use a drill to drill little pilot holes, but these nails are actually sharp enough to go through without needing a drill. Okay, so we're going to just apply these. Oh, goodness, that made a bit of a, a bit of a noise. Okay, so whichever way you're going to do this, whether you're going to use a drill or screw them in by hand, I will see you back in a few minutes while I do mine so you don't look at me drilling mine in and making a big noise and a big mess. Screw in your, your handles and I'll meet you back in about five minutes. All right, are your handles on? Did that work out well? I know every, every now and again I do a project where I'm screwing in a screw and I hit a knot and then suddenly it isn't going in. So I hope none of you had that problem um, or just use a drill to try and get that screw into its little spot. Um, just as a final uh, piece of advice for your tray, tomorrow, or give it 24 hours, just use a bit of varnish to spray over your, either spray onto your tray or paint it on. You can use a, so you can use a liquid varnish or you can use a spray varnish. I've used a whole bunch of different varieties such as Krylon, Rust-Oleum, Mod Podge. They're all much of a muchness. Just whichever one you get, make sure that it is non-yellowing. Uh, if you use a varnish that is glossy, that will be easier to take care of. Um, it'll be easier to wipe down because you do want to be using these trays. Um, also, the gloss will protect it against the moisture. So make sure that when you do either spray varnish or paint varnish on, that you get all the edges. So the bottom, the top, and the sides. And um, I would say do two to three layers just to make sure that it is well protected. Uh, if you're gonna use the spray-on type, make sure it's in a well-ventilated area, otherwise you're all gonna be high by the end of it. Um, if you would need any further advice on which varnish to get or have any questions with your tray or feedback, please do reach out to me. I am available to you. My email is on the page that I sent out with your kit. Um, I really do miss seeing you all in person and hope that we can do classes again soon. It would be so lovely to see you all again and catch up. Please share your projects on social media or send me a photo. I would love to see what you made. I hope you loved it. I had a good time. Hope you did too. And see you again soon. Stay well and take care. Bye-bye.